Hey, thanks for watching another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. This video is going to be talking about low speed pulse TIG versus high speed pulse TIG. I will get my plug in early and get it out of the way for t shirts. You can click on the link at the bottom of this YouTube video if you're on YouTube and go to the page where you can learn more about them. All right, enough of that. We're going to be talking about one pulse a second versus about 50 pulses a second and uh, how that applies to welding 303, free machining, stainless steel, and other stuff. As a follow-up from last week's video where we welded some 303 stainless steel, I thought it'd be good to talk a little bit more about pulse welding. And uh, the angle we'll take on it today is low speed pulse versus high speed pulse. Low speed pulse, we're going to use about one, roughly one pulse a second. And uh, high speed pulse, we're going to crank it way the other direction and, and maybe weld as high as 150 pulses a second. These parts came from a machine shop. Machine shops love 303 stainless steel because it saves them machining time. It cuts much better than 304, uh, but the problem is it's got sulfur added in it to, to aid in the cutting and machinability. And sulfur and welding uh, don't always go together great. So in other words, it will crack on you if you use the wrong techniques, and it will undercut if you use the wrong techniques. So uh, if you do everything right, uh, you can weld it definitely, and it can be used for certain applications. Uh, this is not something that you know is going to go on the space shuttle. We don't want to build a lifting lug and hang Grandma out over the Grand Canyon, you know, the, uh, anything critical. Uh, but it, but it is often welded and it's often used. So uh, what we're going to talk about today uh, is pulse welding, and we're going to demonstrate slow speed pulse at about one pulse a second, and we're going to crank it up and uh, demonstrate high speed pulse somewhere in the 100 to 150 pulses a second and uh, we'll get some good arc shots so you can see what's going on and then you can uh, if you have pulse on your TIG machine and you want to play around with it you'll have some idea where to start all right I'll try to give you some when I settle in on what parameters that I have found are, uh, are, are going good here for me I'll list them on the web page and uh, and you can you can have a good starting point whether you've got a Dynasty 200 DX uh, an Everlast uh, Power TIG 250EX or a Lincoln Invertec 205 V205T or whatever you've got, it'll still it'll still uh, relate. This is your jump start today to to give you somewhere to start if you've been thinking about dabbling with pulse or just haven't had success pulsing. I'm going to give you some good arc shots so you can see it, and uh, when you can see it, you can do it, right? Because if you're a welder, I can almost guarantee you, you are a visual and tactile learner, meaning you need to see it, and you need to get your hands on it. And if you can see it, and if you can get your hands on it, you can do it, right? So let's do it. All right, and welding some more of these little weldments made out of 303 free machining stainless steel. Uh, first thing we did, we set this thing at about one pulse a second and uh, left the wire in the puddle and just moved. What I did is I tried to move it along maybe a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch while it was on the high side of the pulse and while it was on the background I kind of paused and that gave me a pretty decent little ripple pattern even though I, when you leave the rod in the puddle without pulse you don't get much of a ripple pattern but this gives you a, a ripple pattern just as if you dipped rod in and out. That worked pretty good. Kind of kept the heat down a little bit. Worked fine. The puddles kind of stayed uh, from getting too big on me and uh, so I did a little bit more that way. I'm using 332nd, 2% thoriated electrode here, a number 5 TIG cup. Uh, I've actually got this thing set on about 150 max amps, and that's given me only about 75 output amps by the time I average the low and the high pulse. Still, just like with any other TIG welder, you need to keep a close arc. You need to get, not get carried away with your torch angle and all that. It's not very difficult to learn. It just takes a little seat time. Again, about one pulse a second. You can count. Thousand one, thousand two. A little bit quicker than one pulse a second here, I believe. Actually, here I'm dipping the rod in each time instead of instead of uh, using the uh, lay wire or leaving the rod in the puddle technique. Just messing around. For this application, it's not going to matter. Now here I've got it on up 50 or higher, probably closer to 100 pulses a second, and just leaving the rod in the puddle. That works well also. Uh, the only thing, if you like the stack of dimes look, that's not going to leave any ripples in the weld at all, leaving the rod in the puddle there. And some people prefer that look. So 
leaving the pulses the same. This is probably about 100 pulses a second, just dipping in and out, not doing anything different than I would without pulse. It, it does focus the arc a little bit and help you keep a little bit smaller bead, uh, and sometimes that's important. How far the ripples are apart is just strictly up to how long I wait in between times I dip the rod in the puddle. That freezes the puddle, makes a freeze line, and uh, that's has more to do with it than than the pulse. All right here, we're we're running about somewhere between 50 and 100 pulses a second, and just dipping the rod very frequently. I'm trying to make nice tight ripples. You can see the puddle's kind of staying where I put it, not wanting to wick over to that edge right next to it, and that is one of the benefits of pulse welding. That makes for a nice weld, but nice tight ripples. But that the ripples, like again, is just me dipping the rod in very frequently. You can get a coarse ripples or tight ripples, either one. This is what I hate. This is three or four pulses a second. This makes me want to quit welding right here. This is like, this is not good. This takes the fun out. It's uh, hard to focus on. You can't figure out when to dip rod. And you know, it's a wonder it, it still turned out pretty decent. Again, I'm going to show this again because this is your brain on drugs here. This, to me, if I got a pulse like this, I, I'm pretty much going to find me another line of work because it's just that annoying to me. Three or four, four pulses a second and even up as high as ten pulses a second is just hard to focus on. Ah, this is better. One pulse a second. Moving the torch along. Get in a rhythm. Get in a rhythm. You can do something with this, or I can anyway. So that makes for a decent looking well with decent decent uh, space ripples. Now, I found out on this Everlast uh, Power Tig 250 EX that if I uh, this is this was what I wound up liking the pulse frequency set at high noon, which on high the high there's a low and a high range on the pulser knob. On high range, that gives me somewhere between 50 and 100 pulses a second, and then the other knobs are somewhere around 10 or 11 o'clock, the pulse amps and the pulse time. And I wound up liking that on low and on high. So if you want to do the no-brainer thing and set it and forget it on uh, on an Everlast machine like this, just set the pulse amps and the pulse time on in about the 10 or 11 o'clock position, and that probably gives me around 30 to 40 percent uh, on uh, pulse time on and background current. And uh, then you can go just use the pulse switch and go to low range, and it still works and it takes you down to about one pulse a second. So that's, that gives me what I want. I, I either that changes me with just changing the pulser switch from one pulse a second on up to over 50 pulses a second uh, has the desired effect, and I don't have to monkey with it and mess around with it forever. So 10 or 11 o'clock, you can mess around with it if you got plenty of time and plenty of scrap metal, and see what it does. But uh, this works. So what's better, slow speed pulse or high speed pulse? In my opinion, and my opinion is worth uh, what it cost you on this video, uh, my opinion is I either want to pulse at about one pulse a second or higher than 30 pulses a second. I had it set at about three or four pulses a second for one of those clips, and that was just annoying as hell. One pulse a second, you can get in a rhythm, or you can just lay wire, leave the wire in there. 30 pulses a second or higher, you don't have to worry about a rhythm because it, you, you just weld just like you would normally and it's just got a little background uh, flutter going on that does have an effect on, on, on making that puddle stick where you put it. It's great welding near an edge or it's great filling up a hole, keeps the heat from building up, so it's good for welding stainless steel parts.